some early lessons that really talk about initially lessons four and ten Start off with the ideas of thoughts. Lesson four is these thoughts do not mean anything. But can we can we maybe make a distinction when you you know I mean just versus regular thoughts and private thoughts? I mean No, you can't. They're all the same. Yeah. Any all, all unreal thoughts are private thoughts. I mean, that's what we can, when we go into it deeper, that's what you'll start to see, that that all thoughts, unreal thoughts, are private thoughts. All specific thoughts. Why isn't this a lovely rainy day, or why isn't this a lovely sunny day? It doesn't seem to be an attack thought, necessarily, or a particularly condemning thought, but those are private thoughts. I mean, that's just the mind is is thinking in terms of specifics and it's seeing a specific world, which it's describing, my isn't this a lovely rainy day or my isn't this a lovely sunny day. And that's a private world that doesn't exist because it can't be shared. That's why all thoughts of this world are, are private thoughts. Any thought of the ego would be a private thought. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I tell everybody. Right. So why is it called private? Not because it's kept to yourself and not spoken. Well, everyone who seems to walk this world seems to see the, a world that seems to be an objective world which everybody lives in. But the world can't be shared. 
because it's all private thoughts. You know, they're all specific, they're all images. It's, it's a mind that's forgotten abstraction. It's a mind that's forgotten pure oneness, and now it's thinking in terms of images. And these images can't be shared. You know, you can, we've talked about at times where there seems to be common elements, where people, it seems like there's agreement on certain things like colors and trees and roads and all kinds of different things like that. And then it seems like there are perceptions, like we've talked about when people talk about, you know, politics or a number of different topics. Or, you know, we've even talked about the example of when people go to movies, you know, and they come out and they have all these different opinions. Everybody seems to have a different opinions about everything. Those are more obviously private thoughts. Personal opinions seem to be private because it seems as if everybody has a different opinion on, th on things. There's some areas of common commonality, or you could say areas of agreement, but there certainly are always areas of differences. So private is distinct from what can be shared and what perceptual can be shared. And all private thoughts are perceptual. Because they would be for me. Mm -hmm. So even if there's agreement, it's still private thoughts. Right. Even if there's agreement, you know, you can agree on, like our discussion, the logistical session, you could agree on certain things about, you know, having a meal together on Friday nights or coming together on what you're going to do about cooking the food or buying the food or using up the food and all this and that. And it's all private thoughts. I mean, it goes much, 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 much deeper than that because the, the mind that's seeing a world is seeing a world that is totally unique to the deceived mind. No, if you broke it down to the metaphor that, that there were separate egos or separate minds, no separate mind sees the same world. They all see a uniquely subjective world. With there are many, many, many variations. There seems to be some common elements, but those are not, you know, that's the hallucination that they're, because there aren't private minds. So really, the only thing, to use your distinction about sharing versus not being sharing, private thoughts cannot be shared, and thoughts of God can be. That's what creation is, that's what extension is, that's what it means to share the thoughts of God, to extend them outward. They increase, they were, as creation means, ever increasing, but not in a quantitative form. You know, there's nothing, the increase doesn't uh, mean the same thing in heaven as it means on earth. And on earth it always has a, you know, quantitative component, as if it's multiplying or increasing in numbers, and that's not the way, that's not the, the meaning of the word in heaven. There's a paragraph in Lesson 10 that, that summarizes some of the main, main points in the first 10 lessons. And first of all, in the first paragraph he says, they are not your real thoughts. When the lesson is, my thoughts do not mean anything. It's just saying, that's from an ego perspective when we say, my thoughts. This is an early lesson, so... And the third paragraph kind of summarizes this, some of the main points in the first ten lessons. This aspect of the correction process began with the idea that the thoughts of which you are aware are meaningless, outside rather than within, and then stress their past rather than their present status. Now we are emphasizing that the presence of these thoughts means that you are not thinking. This is merely another way of repeating our earlier statement that your mind is really a blank. To recognize this is to recognize nothingness when you think you see it. 
as such, it is the prerequisite for vision. So there's an awful lot packed into that paragraph. The mind, the deceived mind thinks it's thinking all the time and that there, it's thinking meaningful thoughts. It thinks that the thoughts that are passing through conscious awareness are important in some way, and they aren't. He's saying right off the bat that they're meaningless. Outside rather than within, that's the distinction. If you could think of the, you know, when Jesus later on says, picture your mind as a vast circle surrounded by a heavy layer of dark clouds, you could think of the surrounded by the heavy layer of dark clouds as all these private thoughts that make up the world surrounded by a heavy layer of dark clouds. That's why they're outside rather than within. Within this vast circle would be nothing but light. And then the, a layer of dark clouds around the outside would be the, the, the private thoughts, the attack thoughts. And then stress their past rather than their present status. Within this circle, the circle of light is the present, all these private thoughts are the past. You know, the earlier lesson we just, it was, um, my, lesson number eight is my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. That's what this statement is just summarizing, that all those thoughts that seem like real thoughts, the mind is thinking about all day are just past thoughts. In which produce a past world, a, a world or a script that is already over as well. And then finally he says that now we are emphasizing that the presence of these thoughts means that you are not thinking. Your mind is really a blank. So, you know, to, to kind of go with what Rhonda said, it, it is much deeper than communication ideas of holding no secrets. I mean, we have, we have to go so deeply with this, and that's why when we have these sessions, you know, it's such a precious opportunity to, to take whatever it is, even if it seems general or less specified, or there's a specific, dis, you know, upset that's going on, even if it's a minor one, it's so important to start to throw them out on the table and not because that specific event or specific situation is important in and of itself, but because we have to, to use everything to start to get aware of the, of the process of sinking down beneath them and starting to see that, in the metaphys metaphysical sense, that they don't mean anything. Not just the specific circumstance, but the, all the thoughts of which the mind seems to be aware of. The other general feeling I'm having is this is just exactly what this is. You know, it's like this, you know, the whole the whole morning when I try to be quiet and and uh, meditate, it's like it's just my mind is just full of past and future, just past scenarios. And then I, it was one of those times when I just kept reading the same sentence over and over again. I had no idea what I was reading. It took me like 45 minutes to read two pages. Because my mind was just off. And I didn't even always notice right away that it was off on something. Well, I think it's helpful to just point out again that that as we keep going into this stuff, it's a, to the ego, it is, it is frightening, and it will employ all kinds of maneuvers. You know, some of them we talked about. About you know, we've discussed the whole idea of kind of seeming to, like I was talking about the, last night, at the logistics of kind of just kind of moving out, kind of orbiting around. It can seem a little safer to, to kind of carve out a niche. I mean, that's what the, that's what a private mind wants anyway.